and this is the hike back out, uh, the access trail to uh, Hanson's Point. I'll record until the foliage gets to be too thick. It's just as bad as what it is going back to uh, pitch them tight, but uh, this has been more traveled than that one. I'm sure I'm gonna get soaked before I get to the car. If not from the foliage, from the rain. Maybe I'll get lucky though, and the two guys I just passed back there who walked through my camp already knocked most of the uh, wet off the leaves <laughs> because so far this hasn't been near as bad as pitch them tight I took three steps and I pitch them tight and I was soaked I've walked a good 50 feet or so here and I can't even really tell any water to adjust my hip straps. My hips are a little more sore than they were yesterday. The uh, way backpacks are designed, they carry the load on your hips. And the shoulder straps are mostly just to keep it centered. Rah! Too early to be climbing under limbs. So anyways, uh, the load rides on your hips, which is probably the strongest bones. Just take the weight off of your back. So even a moderately heavy load, I mean, I've, I've hiked before with anywhere from 2 pounds to 75 plus pound load. Packs are often designed too. With a little bumper on the lower back. I don't know how far back this is, it's maybe 3 quarter or a mile back walking through this type of stuff and just for instance this is what these sides look like I mean there's there's no way to go other than the trail you, you can forget going anywhere else so it'd be nearly impossible to get lost I don't remember seeing any side trails I think this is it I know there's a couple places up here too that I'll have to shut the camera off it requires both hands to cross couldn't tell from the camera but that log and this one are both about crotch high and when your legs are sore it makes them fun to get across and another one <clears throat> so after the guys told me that story last night about the place burning down about three years ago as you can tell the log's been burnt the log's been burnt kind of makes sense he said it burnt and then, not long after it burnt, there was a real bad windstorm that come and blew a lot of the weekend trees over. I think this is the campsite I saw the other guys at last night. minutes into this hike. I'm tired. Actually, the camera says 10 minutes. I forgot I started the uh, watch a little sooner. I was cleaning up the camp. So my watch has a heart rate monitor and a mileage tracker. And then my GPS keeps data 
and I compare the two. Like I've had people ask me like, oh, do you have the uh, waypoints of that trail? And I've got waypoints to every trail I hike. Um, and then they usually follow it up with, well, um, that way or that way? I'm gonna say right. Then they usually follow it up with, uh, well, how, how strenuous is it? And so then I can pull up my heart rate monitor data <laughs> and say, here's the heart rate monitor data for that section of trail. And here's the GPX you can kind of compare the two. And I'm relatively in fit. Relatively in shape, I meant. So uh, you know, if you take someone who's in worse shape than me, it's obviously gonna be more of a struggle for them in the places where I struggled. And somebody in better shape than me is gonna be less of a struggle. Um, so on my YouTube channel, I've actually gotten a few people ask for the GPX waypoints and the heart rate data, and I provide that. Um, all you have to do is send me a message and ask for it. I always start at common points of entrance, such as, you know, this one started at the suspension bridge. Um, although originally it was going to be a loop, I'm now making it an out and back, mostly because of all the rain and I'm just beat. Day three of hiking, I'm starting to feel it. Thankfully, probably about 75% of today is downhill. Um, starting from about where this trail ends, there might be a few, some other camps spot over there. crossing that big ass log. Let's go to this campsite. It might be a different trail out. Nope, I don't see any. Another pretty nice, this is a huge campsite. This is probably, from end to end, I get. I bet this is probably a 60 feet wide and 100 feet long. Is there a spot I see up here that goes past this log? Yes. Oh. And there's another place up here though. Well, I didn't walk through this campsite. So I'm supposed to be over here. Mm, that don't seem right either. I don't remember coming up any hills like that. I'm too lazy to get out the, uh, the Garmin and check the waypoints. I don't mind if I get lost sometimes. <laughs> Crazy as that sounds. That really looks like the only way. Another campsite. Oh, ah, trekking poles got me. This actually might be correct. I don't remember going under that tree, but who knows. Nice. Actually, I guess this just goes back to shit spots. Huh. I don't remember walking past those. To get out the GPS, I gotta take my pack off. I'm just gonna keep walking. Mm. I'm still on the ridge, I can see it over there. I'm still on the ridge. I'm just gonna keep walking. Drop this camera down, hopefully. Keep it out of the wet. I'm definitely thinking I'm going the wrong way now for sure. More burnt trees. Let's back up. relatively fresh poop too, it stinks. If you do go hiking and camping, there was a second spot, it was just bad. If you do go hiking and camping, respect others and bury your shit. You know, even if you don't have a shovel, there are sticks everywhere. It doesn't take anything to dig a hole and bury your shit. It saves the smell, it increases decomposition, I mean, maybe I need to do a how to bury your shit video. <laughs> In the YouTube comments, give me your opinion. Should I do a how do I bury my shit video? Show us, Ed. How do you bury your shit? <laughs> Show us the proper way, Ed. Lead us, master. <laughs> all right, so this is the trail that I originally started to take and then didn't. It probably was the correct trail all along. Um, it is definitely more worn. I just don't remember coming uphill. 
not uphill like this anyways. It's pretty, I mean, not that steep, but lots of footprints, that's a good sign. The other trail didn't have any footprints. Huh. I don't think I've ever used the trackback function of my GPS. I'm just always like, eh, if I get lost, whatever. <laughs> I have used it a time or two to verify I'm where I think I am. Uh, as you can tell, I often get confused. <laughs> For instance, uh, when you need to find junctions of trails or something and you think you're at the right junction. I mean, I've looked on the GPS before and found side trails and thought that it was a main trail and nearly made a wrong turn. So it does help for that. Um, I mostly use it, speaking of GPSs, I always take the GPS with me every time I go hiking. Every single time. It's a Garmin uh, 62SC. I use it mostly to mark waypoints and camp spots and water sources um, outside of tracking data. But um, the, the biggest reason why I use it is I've, I've always said I wanted to hike every trail at the gorge. So basically inside of a Garmin's base camp, when I hike a trail, I import that data. And then I have the KY Wilderness Trails map overlay. So when I import the track data, it shows me uh, the trails that I've hiked and the trails I haven't hiked. And then that kind of helps me plan, like, where am I going to go hike next? Um, because often, when I come by myself, I explore new places. And if I bring someone with me, I take them uh, to a place I've already been. Um, hmm. That way, or that way. The leaves look more crumpled that way. So the reason why I do that is uh, I take people that come with me to places I've already been because I can kind of judge based on how fit they are, whether or not they can do a particular trail. I mean, hiking is strenuous. If you've never carried around a 20 or 30 pound pack before and then you put that on and you think you're going to go hike 10 miles, it's usually an eye opener um, because the legs and back is just not used to that weight. And you're using different muscles too than what you would normally use to say walk. You're using different muscles than you would use for jogging or running. And uh, there's no way to really prepare for hiking outside of putting a pack on and going hiking. Um, and a lot of people do just that to condition themselves. They start in the winter time to condition themselves for spring if they don't hike in the winter. They'll put like a, a day pack on and put, you know, two liters of water, that's four pounds, rain jacket and first aid kit, you know, just miscellaneous stuff. You know, they might start out with six pounds and hike several miles. And then the next time they might put on you know, 10 pounds, then they might put on 15, then they might put on 20. So they slowly work their way up to their normal gear weight. And it uh, takes a little bit of time. More footprints going this way than the other. And there's not really any conditioning you can do. Outside of that. And this actually kind of looks slippery. I'm gonna try it. Not too bad. Hmm. Another campsite. I don't remember seeing this one at all. It would be funny if I like, come out somewhere totally different than where I planned on being. And it could also be the reason why I don't remember that campsite is I was so focused on getting to my destination that I sometimes miss things. Because I'm more looking for, am I on the right trail? Is this way I go? Is it just up ahead? Can I see it yet? So if I was to rate this hike for, say, someone who's never been hiking as a one day out and back, um, it's doable. If you start early enough in the morning, take you a uh, day pack. Hey, look, it's the end of the trip. So now I'm back on the main trail, I go left. 